Hello everybody and welcome back to Analog Vernacular. Today we're going to be playing some more Rogue Trader and uh, last we left off we'd been talking to a lot of people. Um, I kind of want to go through the rest of the dialogues with Adira before we move on. Um, but let me just really quickly check the journal. So what are we at right now? So prologue, chapter one. So we've completed the prologue and now we're considered in chapter one, is that right? Okay, so we have a bunch of like macro goals, right? A personal request for Argenta. We've kind of started that. Let's see. Argenta asked the rogue trader to talk with her on the ship. Okay, we actually did that one, so technically we've already done that. Is that, oh yeah, it's got the check mark. Okay. I was gonna say, we did that, so it said better not put it off for too long, so. Um, that indicates that, you know, you can probably progress the story and miss out on certain things if you go too far without doing some of these side quests, so. Good to know. All right. So our errands, the guide, the void ship needs a new navigator. One may be found on the Navis Nobolite station. New blood, the crew losses suffered during the cultist raid can be remedied on Rykad Minoris. And the machine spirit keeper, the void ship requires a new engine seer who may be found somewhere in the system. So yeah, those are our current goals. All right. Let's see. I like to hear your augury, Adira. What awaits me in the future? Um, we already, we did this one, didn't we? All right, let's hear what they're whispering about you, hmm? <sighs> I'm sorry, Lord Captain, the voices are going wild. Okay. I can't make out a thing. I'll try to rein them in somehow, but for now. Okay, so did you know Theodora Van Valancia as well? None of the officers knew the Lord Captain well. Not even Abelard, and she was always closer to him than anyone else. She told me from the off that if I ever listened to anything in the warp about her without her permission, I'd be going out through the airlock. I'm not an idiot, so I never stuck my nose where it didn't belong. Only when I was asked. It's hard to wrap my head around the fact that she's gone. Lady Von Valancius gave me everything I have. She opened the stars to me and the paths between them. I... I still think I can hear her voice. Things are strained between you and Argenta, isn't that right? That's putting it mildly, I think. The little sister is afflicted with her own set of voices. Ones that whisper to her about corruption and heresy. The silly girl doesn't realize that if she wants to find the source, she needs to start by looking in her own head. <laughs> Damn. Got a new story for me, Adira? You bet I do, Lord Captain. Adira becomes much more animated, and her expression turns slightly dreamy as she recalls one of her stories. <laughs> okay, so, we went to Footfall once. Well, I mean, Lord Captain Theodora went to Footfall a lot. But on that occasion, she took me with her for some reason. My day had gotten off to a bad start. My head had been yammering since I woke up. But there was nothing else for it. I had to go. We arrive at the place. And what a place! <laughs> All the gentlemen and ladies dressed to kill, showing off their encrusted implants, or clustered around little tables. Well, turned out it was a gaming den. And not just any gaming den, but one run by somebody with deep pockets for people with just as much cash to splash. <laughs> you should have seen it. People gambling away planets in a game of regicide. Anyway, so the Lord Captain wanted me to help her beat some guy. So I tell her, the chips won't land in your favor. You'll get a bad hand. Don't sit down at that table, your ladyship. But did she listen? Of course she didn't. If there's one thing she never lacked, it's stubbornness. So, they sat down and the cards were dealt. I'm hovering around like I'm not involved, but I'm keeping my eye on things. And everything in my head keeps getting louder and louder. Anyway, it's a good thing I realized in time that my mind wasn't going haywire over a losing hand, but something else. I made some excuse to drag the Lord Captain up from the table and took her away from that place. And a few minutes later, the room where we'd been, Turned out, some 
some wise guy had the same bright idea to bring a pet Psyka along with him. One of those ones who just scuttle around in footfalls underbelly. And the Psyka just freaked out, I guess. <laughs> After all the commotion, people went to see what happened in the room. And they'd all gone for each other's throats. Literally. With teeth. Damn. <laughs> And I think they completely detached that asteroid from footfall and pushed it off into open space so it would head off toward the local star. <laughs> so does it act somewhat like an infection too? So obviously if a Psyker allows too much chaos to kind of like spill over through them as a conduit, does it then infect other people? Is it kind of like a disease almost at some points? That's kind of what it sounds like. Like they wanted to just get rid of that entire casino after this happened. I don't really know the lore, so I'm just wondering. Always at your set. Okay, um, we got through that dialogue. Now, in this playthrough, I don't like. We're not gonna go down the route of heretical. I don't think. I think at, at all points, it's either gonna be iconoclast or dogmatic. I think that that just kind of like fits better with the role play. Um, just because, like, this seems like a society that is so dogmatic that it would be, like, weird for this commissar to to go that direction, but... Um, so that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Ooh, we have level up. Okay. Um, do I want to wait until I have the rest of my party? Um, I'm assuming that they'll be joining us again. Um, is there anywhere else for me to go? Anyone else for me to talk to? We couldn't go down here. So there's nothing there. We found Adira, we talked to all of our party members. We didn't exhaust all the dialogues with some of the other people on the ship, but um, I don't think we're going to right now. Okay, there is Captain's Quarters. Let's go there real quick, see what this is about. See if there's anything for us to interact with new here. Okay, my cats are fighting each other in the background right now. Hey, cats, chill out. <laughs> Playing too hard. The positions of the pieces on the board suggest that this game of regicide was interrupted. The winner was never determined. It's called regicide? Okay. Liturgies of the faithful to his word and name, the text below the solemn heading looks noticeably faded. It appears that the prayer book has been kept open on this page for a very long time. Okay. The Lord Captain's personal cogitator, Von Valencia's ancestry records. Oh, is this credits? Oh no, Shrine of Remembrance. Um, this must be like Patreon or something. Um, crowdfunding. Yeah? Okay. What do we want the vault for? I guess if we don't want something to go to cargo where it's going to be sold, um, and we don't want to carry it in our inventory, we put it in the vault. Is there anything that I could do with this? A blade made from a mysterious metal that shimmers with unnatural colors. I wonder if that's like a super weapon that you can put together or something if you get all the parts. Okay, this was the note from the Inquisitor. Do we need to keep that with us? I think we'll keep it with us just to be safe. I never know when I'm going to get new party members, so keeping some extra weapons and stuff on hand may not be a bad idea. Oh, look at that. We can do our level ups from here for everybody. Okay, that's good to know. 
All right, so this level up, we have two extra things here. Um, I think one of them we were going to do here was probably Ballistic Skill to get our plus four on that. So our other options would be Fellowship, which, which would get us a plus five. Um, but I think right now I want him to be able to hit more often with his um, with his gun, because he's not hitting that often. So I think that's my immediate need. Um... But yeah, Fellowship would be the other one. We'd be able to get a plus five on that if we were to do that. But I think here... Oh, our Ballistic Skill right now is at 40. So do I... Okay, in that case, we will do Fellowship to get the plus five. Now on this one, we could go and do Ballistic Skill, couldn't we? Or is that not one of the options? Um, also, weapon proficiencies is an interesting one. Like, do I need any of these? Right now, I don't know enough to know what I would want, so I'm not going to be doing that, but... And also, what's the prereqs for these? So, strength prereq, character level, okay, cool. Dual weapon combat. The character can attack with the second weapon in their current weapon set, in addition to the usual one attack per round. This attack suffers a minus 20 penalty to weapon skill and ballistic skill, and cost plus one AP more. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Um, and can you hold two guns at the same, two like one-handed guns, two pistols? Or does it have to be one melee, one ranged? I don't actually know. Okay. So right here, I think these ones, oh, they're still only a plus five. I thought these ones would be a plus 10. So no matter what, we're going to have to work that up. All right, so that's one of our options. We can take Ballistic Skill to start getting that up a little bit higher. So common talents are different than the other talents that we did in the previous one. Grenadier. So what is the prereq for Medicaid? That's an advanced skill. Okay, there's probably a common skill for Medicaid, right? I just don't know if I need this. My character currently can't use medikits. Do I need this skill? That's what I don't know. Um, the nice thing is, is that we can re-roll our character. So if... If we want to, we can always re-roll. So right now it's between Ballistics or Medicaid. And I think I want to work on my Ballistics, if I'm being honest, so... Okay, I think that's what I'm going to do for now. Alright, now for you, you would get a bonus if we got Ballistics right now. Agility, we wouldn't get a bonus, and your agility is already pretty good. Yeah, I think it's Ballistics, for sure. That plus five on her is going to be really good. Um, Now, reloading costs, what, three AP? So Rapid Reload could actually be pretty damn good. So that would go from three to just one. The first reload in a combat does not cost AP. For her, that might be really good. Honestly, Rack and Ruin sounds good too. There there doesn't seem to be any like turn thing, so it's not like you have to get the three dam the three units damage damaged in one turn. So it's just like As long as she's doing effective like spread damage, uh Rack and Ruin is just gonna be adding extra attack to a lot of things. And it's gonna be based on ballistic skill. Alright, that one sounds pretty good too. Um, I don't like the adjacent ally thing. I don't like that. Um, it, it, that's a, that's a prerequisite I don't want to rely on to have an effective skill. We already have unpredictable, apparently. Um, we must have gotten that one in the last one, huh? Or maybe it was like a base skill that was given to us in her 
build before we picked her up. Whenever the soldier deals damage, their critical damage is increased by plus 1% until the end of combat. That could be pretty good too. And cover efficiency just makes cover much better. Oh man, there's some good ones here. I'm going to take Rack and Ruin. We're going to take Rack and Ruin. All right, Adira. So Int, Perception, we get a bonus. And Willpower, your Willpower is already pretty high. I don't know if that would be my initial focus. So let's actually do Perception and get a bonus there. And then later we can work on some more willpower. Um, yeah. Okay. None of these are recommended necessarily. Okay. Let me rem remind myself. So level 10 is when we can go to the next side rating, which is probably what we're going to do once we get there. But for now, what do we want? Plus two movement points. Bonus to parry. Bonus to dodge. I mean, for somebody who has low toughness, that might be good. Just have things miss more, you know? So dodge is for ranged and melee. Parry is only for melee, correct? Yes, I think that's what I'm seeing here. Okay, Nimble's an idea. Okay, an HP bonus? by half of the character's level. And I'm assuming that that will continue to be the case going forward, right? So like every level we get, it will continue to add more to our HP. Um, you'll get the most gains on something like that on somebody who already has naturally high HP. Um, it won't shore up somebody who's already softer to begin with, but you know, shoring up somebody who's soft is not a bad idea. It's just gonna be the most effective. You're gonna get the most out of it on a tank, I feel like. So I don't think that's going to be for her. We just want to keep her away from damage to begin with, I think. Okay, we could work on willpower if we wanted to. So if we don't like nimbleness, we can just work on willpower. Um, base skills. I think most of her stuff would be based off of awareness by the looks of what she's already built into. At the beginning of every combat, the Psyker's allies gain plus 15% critical hit chance. The first critical hit removes this effect. I kind of like that. I think, do I like that better than Nimble? Make her dodge more, or give us this just base bonus to crit at, at every fight. Hmm. Allies under the effect of at least one psychic power gain an additional uh, armor penetration. Okay. Every nine successful dodge and or parry by the Psyker and their allies combined grants the Psyker plus two additional AP on the next turn. The first dodge attempt of every enemy in combat suffers a penalty. Of every enemy. Only the first one. But, like, that's a good way to start a fight, you know? What determines your Psy rating? Oh, that's our... 
each level of psi rate. So technically we've got a zero on that right now. So like this wouldn't be useful until later, right? I mean, it has a base, so. Well, no, it's uh, multiplied by zero. So right now that's useless. Until we get to level 10 and can at least be a psi rating of one, we get no bonus from this. Am I understanding that correctly? Because right now our psi rating is zero. And once we hit level 10, we can get Psy rating 1. Okay, unnatural luck. When the Psyker uses a divination psychic power on an ally without an unnatural luck effect, that ally gains unnatural luck. When the ally suffers a critical hit, it becomes a normal hit instead, and the unnatural luck effect is removed. Okay, does she even have any divination psychic powers? Like, I think all of her stuff is offensive right now. Um, either debuffs... I don't think we... I don't think she has any buffs. I don't remember. I guess we can look, huh? Yeah, this is for the enemy. That's for the enemy. That's for the enemy. Okay, that one would be the only one that that would work with. Yeah, I don't think I like that. Man, there's so many. Okay, what was the one that I found? The where was the um, predicted downfall? Oh no, we decided that that one doesn't work right now for us. And then what was the other one that we had picked? Nimble. All right, let's take nimble for now. Oh, and we need to re-select this, um, uh, Perception. Oh, yours is different. Okay, choose a talent and then choose- oh, never mind, they're just backwards. <laughs> Whenever an enemy attacks the warrior, the warrior's next melee attack against that enemy deals an additional 5 damage. Whenever the warriors attack, they gain plus 1 stack of epicenter of slaughter until the end of combat. At the start of their turn, the warrior gains plus 1 temporary wound for each stack. These temporary wounds cannot exceed the warrior's 5. I think I'm going to take that. So, does this mean that this is an ability that we have to use? When it has this icon, or is this a passive? How do we know what's an ability and what's a passive? Are these always passives? Alright, we're gonna take Epicenter Slaughter and we'll find out. Um, okay. Weapon skill. Good one for you. Toughness. Strength which I think does have an effect on the amount of damage you do with melee weapons, right? Yeah. Is it based on the characteristic bon- uh, the bonus? If so, then you won't get the bonus right now. And then agility, we could actually get that to a plus four if we wanted to. So weapon skill is your hit, chance, and your, your, your parry and dodge chance, okay? So it's parry and dodge and critical hit. And then strength is how much damage is actually output. I'm going to do weapon skill. Because I think just reducing damage of somebody who's a frontliner like that, I would take over raw damage, at least at the beginning. 
We'll work on damage later, I think. Okay. Well, there we have it. Now, what are you? A cracked data slate. The final transactions with the Chartist are complete. The Fiery Reckoning is now fully equipped. The object has been loaded aboard with its containment intact and placed in the fore bay to ensure maximum contact with the target. Coordinates sent and received by the bridge. Target's estimate time of arrival in the system. The Fiery Reckoning is crewed by a servitor. Chances of the ship returning are minimal. What is that about? I smell a conspiracy. What heretical shit is this? Unfinished letter. To his chagrin is a uh, something his chagrin is irrelevant. Voitver's mistake cost me too much. Years of work, tremendous resources all wasted. He has failed at what he was supposed to be irreproachable at. Uncovering spies, and this one was a senior officer. I'm not about to discard him. Kunrad has served me for too long for his removal to go painlessly for the Protectorate. Besides, he is no fool. He could not have seriously expected to become the next in the Von Valencius line when his skills and talents as Master of Whispers are so valuable. Let his disinheritance serve as a humiliating but instructive lesson from which he may yet learn. The question is, is when he made these mistakes, was he already a heretic or did he become heretical afterwards? Join whatever this chaotic entity is. Actually, in fact, I think he might be working independently of the entity, right? He didn't seem to know what this chaotic entity was up to and it took his form to kill Theodora for some reason, but he had no idea that that happened. So um, I think that he might actually be independent of what's happening with whatever this chaos thing is that could take other people's forms. Okay, let's go back to the deck. Oh, I also want to really quickly see, can I have two guns? Yes, but without the dual wielding thing, we'd still only be able to attack with one of them. So unless we have the dual wielding thing, I don't think it uh, makes sense to have that. That's two handed, right? No, it's one handed. Five to seven, six to nine. Okay, we'll keep the six to nine. Strike, swing, and what a sweep. What does sweep do? Huh. I don't know. Okay. I'm assuming this will allow us to travel somewhere. Star systems. The events of Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader takes place in a vast region of space known as the Coronas Expanse. This sector is composed of numerous star systems, many of which you will get a chance to visit. You will find yourself scouring the void in search of routes leading to new, uncharted systems, discovering more routes as you explore the Expanse. What you see before you is the map of one such system. Each star system contains objects you can interact with. Such objects are marked as points of interest. Move your ship to a point of interest, then click left mouse button on it to initiate the event or open up the planet view. Okay, so that's an unidentified ship. Is this us? No, that's a marker saying that there's a mission that this is us. So Rykad Majoris, a scan is required. The guide. So the guide is us looking for our, um, shoot, what are they called? Can I look at my journal from here? Yes, I can. So the guide, the navigator, forgot what they were called. 
Now we've been trying to hail this place, but we got no answers. Alright, let's try and go there first. Okay, I don't know what that is. But that is something. There's an icon here. We move from there to there. Yeah, we'll figure that out, I guess, as we go. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. Lord Captain reporting. The heralds of the Navis Nobelite continue to maintain Vox Islands, perhaps due to Yurok, the f uh, Yurok 5 being off limits to visitors. We intercepted signals from the beacons drifting in the station's orbit. The demands are clear. We are told to turn the ship around immediately. Oh dear, okay. We have also detected an accumulation of space debris near the station's docks. Presumably, it is the remains of interplanetary shuttles. Perhaps the esteemed Navis Nobelite house requires aid, and therefore cannot respond to our Vox transmission. Or they really don't want us to be here. Um, interesting. Uh, maybe having them scan the station? Order the Augur crew to scan the station. Yes, Lord Captain. The Vox remain silent for a while, but then you hear static and Vigdis's measured voice. The officers from the Augur crew performed a full scan of the station, but the information is imprecise. They note wave distortions of unclear genesis that are throwing off most of the readings. We were able to ascertain that the reactor core of the station is still active, but many compartments are unpowered and some fully depressurized. The signs of biological activity are largely present in the central module. So yeah, it does sound like they're in trouble then. Which means the station has not been abandoned. So the question remains, why are the esteemed navigators, Heralds, ignoring us? Let's see. We'll try contacting again. And then I will be rude about it. <laughs> Contact the station again, I will negotiate personally. The Vox relays the cadet sound of grinding gears, cadence sound, of grinding gears and clicking tumblers. I am sorry, Lord Captain, the station does not reply even after an official greeting by a rogue trader and the declaration of your intent to negotiate in person. Turn back? No one dares to give me orders. No, Lord Captain, of course not. Order the crew to commence docking with the station. Affirmative, Lord Captain, we do not know what is happening at the station, so you will have a look have to look for the esteemed navigator's blind. Dock safely, and may the god emperor light your path. I'm sure this can only go well. Explore the station to find answers. The Navis Novalite. Okay, I don't know where that text ended up in the end. Here we are. The Navis Nobelite Station is not responding to any signals, but the Augur R arrays have detected biological signatures in the main chamber. The rogue trader's only option is to perform an emergency docking and personally investigate. Now, I'm guessing that there's probably areas that are high le higher level than others, so it is completely possible that we go into this map and find out that we are not prepared for whatever's here. So I just wanna, I just wanna say that before we go in, because I don't know what to expect, um, but I do assume that each area has its own kind of set level, um, which means that we may or may not be able to do this right now. Okay, so does that mean we can go in now? Not explored, scan is required. Okay, here we go. Begin the scan. Also, what is all this? So people, provisions, chemicals, plastil, mechanisms, promethium, Weapons, Xenotech, Adamantine, Phlogiston, Love Phlogiston, and the Profit Factor. And I, I you know I like the Profit Factor. Um, I know what all of those are and what how they're going to play into the game, he says sarcastically. Okay. Well, I mean, that's who we have. Um, it almost looks like there's room for six in the party.
more heretics? Pathetic worm. You dare to argue with your master? It was not you whom I swore to serve within these walls. My lips are sealed. Confess! What was the old man's last command? What are you planning? Give up, Keeper. You have lost this battle. Again. <laughs> We're getting nowhere with these ones, sir. Permission to execute them. Wretches, you will be consigned to oblivion for your transgressions against House Orcelio. Immortal Emperor, deliver your servants from peril. Prayers will not help you, servant of the damned. In the name of House Orcelio, I command you to execute the infidels. Damn, a cross shot of a shotgun with one of your buddies behind is pretty dangerous there, buddy. Not a step further. Master, we have some strange guests on the station. Felic Orcelio. A tall man stops you with a gesture when you approach. Blood is trickling down the pearly scales of his weary face. And not just his own blood. Two jet black unblinking eyes are watching your every move. And the third one, the mark of a navigator's fate, is menacingly pulsing behind the lowered lid in the middle of his forehead. So he is a navigator. Step back, or I will unleash all the horrors of the Sea of Souls upon you. Emperor, be my witness. So the Sea of Souls is, um, oh yeah, it's just another name for the warp. Okay. Desist, brother. It was the Emperor's will that brought me to this abode. The navigator frowns. No one has the right to interpret his will so freely, brother. But wait, I recognize your coat of arms. You must be a lord of the Von Valancius dynasty, yes? I am absolutely positive, in fact. And since fate has brought such an important person into my abode, allow me to introduce myself. Before you stands Felic Christoph August, keeper of this station. So you did not come to offer support to the traitors? This is great news. Having said that, you must understand that Yorak V is a holy sanctum for House Orcelio, and the path to it is only revealed to a select few. It pains me to say you are not on the guest list. Uh, maybe bringing up the Lord Inquisitor is a good idea. I am looking for the Lord Inquisitor's interrogator, one Heinrich von Kallax. Do you know anything about his present location? The Lord Inquisitor's interrogator? I think I would know if such an important individual decided to pay us a visit. I came here in search of a navigator, so you are coming with me. Or you just insist. I love it. Oh, is that so? Even wounded, Felic Orcelio remains composed. I do not think so. You cannot force me. You can only end my life. But this is not your heart's desire, is it? Perhaps... Perhaps we can help one another and reach a more beneficial agreement. Well, if you provide me with a navigator, I will immediately depart the station. I do not think this is possible. Iraq 5 is an observation station. We do not sign contracts and do not provide navigators. We delve into the depths of infinity and chart the movements of the warp storms. And besides, Felic gestures at the disorder around him. You have chosen an inopportune time for negotiations. Let me help with that, huh? How about that? What agreement are you talking about? You came to the station for a reason. House Orcelio will not be able to help you until the current crisis is resolved. But if you aid us now, I promise we will reach an agreement that you will find satisfying. Be it riches, influence, or the powers of our navigators. What is happening on the station? Where did all these corpses come from? Oh, betrayal. A most banal thing in the life of the Nobelite, don't you think? I was stabbed in the back by my closest friend, Theobald Orcelio, the second keeper of Yurak V, and my mentor. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, betrayal going on right now. On his instructions, my own people sabotaged the generators, blew up the shuttles, and brutally massacred the loyal servants of my mistress. Most unforgivably, they dared to take her prisoner. Greedy scum. I swear by the throne's light their souls will perish in the darkness of the void. Let me take care of this heresy for you. Good fella Corselio. Felic falls silent for a moment. 
and then furiously slams the end of his staff into the floor. The madmen have captured Lady Cassia and are now torturing her upstairs while we are idly chatting down here. Help me rescue her or be gone, but waste no more of my precious time. Take him by force or attack. Okay, what kind of help are you talking about? Oh, I would never ask you for such a favor under different circumstances, and yet... Felix takes his hand away from his ribcage, notices blood, and winces in pain. And yet Lady Cassia's well-being is above all. I haven't got many people left, and my wounds are too deep for me to act with precision and swiftness. But you, you may actually succeed. In order to ascend to the mistress's chambers, you will need to remake a holy relic sanctified with the blood of Lady Orselio herself. This is the control rod of the elevator, Machine Spirit. I have one part and the other was lost during the mutiny, but even this relic will be of no use unless the elevator mechanism is powered. Okay, how do I make, uh, remake this rod? Well, I have a phylactery containing the mistress's blood. It needs to be taken to the laboratory, which is located behind one of the relic buried doors. The most ancient of sacred mechanisms will help to rebuild the rod. The tech priests ceaselessly perform the rites of appeasement so that the machine spirit would serve the house in its time of need. The fateful hour is now upon us. So, how do I power the elevator? The station's main cogitator is situated in the guard room. Just enter the correct command sequence and the sacred mechanism will do the rest. If it is so simple, why don't you do it yourself? I never said the feat would be easy to accomplish. The path to the laboratory and the guard room is blocked by the very same madmen who took the over the station. They will not negotiate and are not afraid of displeasing the Navis Nobilite or incurring the Emperor's wrath. They bow only to brute strength, something which I currently happen to lack. I suppose that makes sense. So what have you decided, descendant of the Von Valancius line? Okay. It would be an honor to save the Lady Navigator from her woes. Felic nods curtly. You should hurry, then. We will stay here to hold the line and lick our wounds. Good luck, rogue trader, and may the Emperor's light be with you. Okay, we got the phylactery. Okay. Nothing to loot. Return to the void ship. Is there money to be made? Hurry, each minute may cost the mistress her life. Okay, let's go ahead and examine this. 85% is pretty good. The corpses were mauled by the force far beyond any mortal capacity. The faces are twisted in pain. And the hands are fused with improvised weapons. Tools, scissors, and cutlery. Ooh. Okay, that's kind of dark. So we have an athletics over here, and we have this over here. The elevator's power is out. So is this our only way forward? 90% is pretty good. <laughs> Nothing's impossible for this old officer. Damn right. Well done, Avalard. We should deal with this. Ooh. Okay, we paused, which means an automatic pause can mean different things. Avalard spots a trap. Okay, this will tell us. Good. Good, 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 good. Um, okay, is it highlighted? There it is. No. There's a trap up ahead. Order your character to disable it. If a character enters a trapped area or fails the test to disarm it, the trap will trigger dealing damage and inflicting injuries on all characters within its area of effect. Okay, so who is our trap guy? Uh, it looks like Argenta was the one who came and did it. So traps is gonna be, hold on, it actually said, didn't it? 
Demolition. Okay, that makes sense. And yeah, I think she is our best demolition. Um, let's see. Where is it? 35? Okay, it's actually not even that good. You have better demolition. Nope, Argenta. There we go. Okay. Everybody come over here. And then just Argenta. That way if there's an injury, um, we'll be okay. Sometimes you will see a trap marked with the red area and a connecting dotted line. This line leads to the mechanism that controls the trap. Okay, good to know. Hover your cursor over the mechanism. If the cursor changes to a trap icon, the trap can be disarmed by interacting with the mechanism. Okay. And then if there's a line, then you have to go to the object. Okay, success. Okay, we're gonna move somewhat slow. Who has the highest awareness? So perception, 40, awareness 40, 50, 60. You have the highest awareness. Okay, so with that being the case, maybe I'll do something like this. And that way, she's more likely to get her awareness checks when we want them. Okay, 50% Medicaid isn't great. Duty prevails. Most of these unfortunate souls took their own lives by slicing their guts wide open. Gross. Stand firm. We must not let the miscreants defile House Orcelio. These are allies? Seems like it. Fire at will for House Orcelio. Guess not. Of you. You dare cross the oh, there we are. Okay. So, oh. No, they're all enemies? Okay, so I guess both factions are technically part of House Orcelio, so... Okay, this looks like a big fight. Commands I act. Strike is a prayer. Doubt is for the weak. Okay, we know that single shots can go through stuff. Oh, and it looks like we can actually damage this and get rid of it. By faith, none you can escape the Emperor's well done. Oh, my gosh, he keeps hitting. Yeah, there's no kind of dash mechanic, is there? Got too far out of range. I 
I know what is to come. Pain and duty go hand in hand. thing you actually can shoot so I think we're gonna give this to you oh it penetrated through the one that hit penetrated through and did three damage behind that's really cool okay can you reach that no From what I understand, I can actually use this charge to move forward even more, right? Is that true? Tried and tested tactics are the best ones. Oh, and it goes one forward. Whoops. Okay, that's bad. <laughs> uh, brace for impact might be needed here. Um, let's see, how does this work? Plus two deflection for each archetype taken by the Navy officer, and then endure. Yeah, let's just uh, endure. Ugh, my ears are ringing. Well done, sir. Well done. Revelin Slaughter is available. How do I use it? Is that one of these? No. Immediately removes the winded effect. Oh, it's that. They just have different icons. Um, how long does winded last? Okay, so I should be fine. I don't need to use that yet. Maybe next turn we'll use it. percent ain't great but he landed it look at that oh I should have done that whoops okay who got it last time you did maybe I should have given it to her while she's out in the open I'll see to it personally Yeah, you know what? Maybe that reload thing I should get. 
because I would have been able to reload had I gotten that um, free reload at once per fight. I gotta, I gotta keep an eye on that. I'm not realizing. <laughs> I've seen worse battles than this in my time. It will be done. Why is they going after her so hard? Brace yourself, Avalard. Faith without deeds is worthless. I'll do it. Had a chance of killing, so as the Emperor Command oh. eradicated, oh. doubt is for the weak. None can escape the Emperor's judgment. Damn, it's a good ability. As the Emperor Command. <laughs> I'll finish it. Wait, who's left? Oh, there's a guy over here. On it. Anything else? It's as good as done. On it. You never stood a chance. Nice, he got it even with the low chance. Well done, sir. Okay. No worries on veil degradation on that one either. We're no longer in the in the warp, so I think that the uh, veil stuff is going to take a lot longer to add up. Okay, what does this do? Um, armor, 20%, dodge penalty, 0.75. Okay. Character wearing this armor will dodge 0% of average enemy attacks in this chapter. This armor reduces the incoming damage of average enemy attacks in this chapter by 15%. So this one's more about reducing damage, not necessarily dodging. Okay, 35% on average, um, the current armor 55% on, on average. It's kind of interesting that during the chapter they give you an average of your dodge percentage, probably based on the average stats of the enemies that you fight. That's kind of an interesting way of doing it. I actually really appreciate that. Uh, fresh injury, we might want to deal with that. Okay. Um, okay, so I don't really want this armor then. I'd rather, yeah, the armored body glove, that 40% dodge is pretty good. Okay. 
So yeah, we're not going to use that. Now this two-handed ranged weapon laser gun. Mutated flesh sample? Okay. Who's better at Medicaid? You've got a 35, you've got a 30. How do I use this outside of combat? Sins hidden in the oh, heart here turn we go. all to decay. All right, and she got her roll, so she was able to get rid of the injury. Statue of the famous Calixi uh, Calixian sculptor and chronicler, Zacharias uh, Vernon the Magnificent, the 23rd year of the Millennium Original. Oh, everybody get together. A Data Crypt H40KO. Alright, we're getting all sorts of stuff we don't know why it's important, but it has an important icon. It's got that weird highlight. This too. Pontius Siphius Galasius, on the training of worthy servants of the court of the Navis Nobilite, a good major domo attempts to nurture only the finest of flowers in the garden that is their master's life. Therefore, new seeds for the garden must be weeded out with the utmost care, so that the garden's trees may yield the sweetest fruit. The lessons below will help you separate the precious seed from the vile thorns to cultivate the perfect garden for any lady navigator. Lesson 1. A faithful servant always makes sure their mistress's rooms and garments are clean. Lesson 2. A faithful servant will never offer their mistress the same dress presented earlier in the cycle. Lesson 3. A faithful servant offers their mistress a glass of fresh water upon waking. Lesson 4. A faithful servant tastes each dish and every drink before serving it to their mistress. Lesson 5. A faithful servant will have mastered the arts of styling their mistress's hair. The total time that five servants can spend on arranging their mistress's Coiffer, coiffer, should not exceed three revolutions of the chronometer. Lesson six, a faithful servant lives for their mistress and gladly gives their life for her as well. Lesson seven, a faithful servant dot dot dot. It's a whole book, so there's a lot of those. Um, it's a lot of lessons. So if you put it in cargo once, then it assumes that you want all of those in cargo. I actually love that. I actually love that. <laughs> Interpreted conversation between security officers. Tremendous honor, yes, but this promotion will transfer the entire squad to the child's personal guard. By the God Emperor. Well, you are a strapping lad. You will probably make it for a cycle or three. It has worn down better men than me. What even is the point if your brains turn into mush? I may rip out my eyes like Amos did. At best, I'll just go bonkers like that little shit stain that kept stealing our... Whatever that is. Oh? What happened to that one? Threw himself out of a depressurized chamber because some voices told him to. Calm down, Keeper Felix said the squad will not have to serve the child for long. He even gave us a little leeway. Unlike that fish-eyed... Be quiet, he might hear you. 
Well, you know what I mean. He almost busted our heads because someone forgot to check the catering unit. We haven't let it... Uh, we haven't let in a single outsider in over 10 years, but Keeper Theobald keeps finding things to fret over. Imagine the shrieking if he finds out Keeper Felic didn't make uh, us inspect the hangar after Lord Winterscale's most recent visit. Oh, thrown for bid. I tried to steer clear of the squabbles among the Highborn. Some of Keeper Felic's orders make little sense. Like, the last time he commanded that we cut off communications with Rykad Minoris for a while. Why would he do that? It looks like he grew tired of the Winter Scale Scion's visits. Well, it's always a pleasure to aid Keeper Felic. That's right, if the Highborn have grown tired of each other, let them deal with it. The library is full of treatises by the most distinguished scholars of the Imperium, from Astra Militarum tacticians to Adeptus Mechanicus gen gen genitors. Let us not dawdle. The Lady Navigator statue looks pristine and new. So is this the navigator that we're supposed to be saving? All right. So we have two doors this way and this way, and we're going to be checking those out in the next episode. So thank you all for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. I'd like to give a very special shout out to my patron supporters, Darren York, ZTD, Knife Namase, Kyle the Monarch, Chris Murphy, JW, Quinless, Vlada 101, Andy Ford, Bruce Wizzle, Black Mamba 90, Eureka Gecko, A Happy Fat Panda, Turkeyfoot 27, Pedo Kuto, Shadow Raven, and Nadia N. If you would also like to join this tier or any others, check out my memberships or my Patreon in the description down below.